I think this whole ultramarathon experience for me has completely shifted my perspective on what I think I'm able to do because I know that if I set my mind to something yeah it's going to be fucking hard but you know you're going to be able to do it so last week I completed my very first 50 kilometer ultra marathon. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about running your very first ultra marathon. If you're new here, hello, my name is Emily. I am a slow runner and I make videos all about embracing your slower pace and challenging yourself to run no matter what your pace. If you enjoy it, that is good enough. Last week, you saw me take on my very first 50 kilometer ultra marathon, which was one of the most insane and definitely the hardest things that I have ever done. And this week I had so many questions that I just wanted to chat to you about. Hopefully this is helpful if you're thinking about doing an ultra marathon or if you're just nosy and wanna know more about how the race went. I'm first gonna start off with any training related questions. I think it makes sense just to go in that order. If you are interested in knowing my background in running, I've only been running for about a year and a half consistently. And I did make a whole video about my running journey so far. So if you want to know backstory, I mean, it's not essential to this video, but if you do, you can go ahead and watch that video. I'll link it below. But right now we're talking about training for my very first 50 kilometer ultra marathon. So I got a few questions specifically about how I actually trained. Yes, I did use a running plan. The, the running plan that I used is called Runner. I have done many of their plans by this point. I'm a big, big fan. It is basically like a personalized and customizable training plan that you just get from your phone basically. And you can sync it up with whatever watch that you're wearing. When I say it's personalized, I mean, they will ask you how advanced you are running if you're beginner, advanced, intermediate, and um, what kind of distances do you're currently running? And also um, if you have any times, like if you have a 5k time, a 10k time, whatever it might be, you can pop that in and then it will build a plan based around how often you want to train, what you're training for. Um, you can do anything from like your first 5k up to ultra marathons and now triathlons as well. We'll also take into account your pace and how many days a week you want to train. It really is the most personalized plan that you can get outside of using a running coach. And obviously like if you're just starting running and you're not wanting to take it too seriously, it's just kind of a fun thing for you to challenge yourself. A running coach probably isn't going to be a priority, <laughs> especially because they're, they're going to be a lot more expensive than a running app. If you do want to give a runner a go, you can use my code EMILY2. This isn't an ad, but um, I am a runner affiliate. So yeah, but I mean, I genuinely use it and I love it so much. I've spoken about it so many times. You guys know how much I really believe in the app. You can use the code EMILY2, which will get you two weeks free. And after that, it's $15.99, but it includes any training plan you want to do, mobility, Pilates, and also gym strength training, which as we know is really important when you are working on your running fitness. I have a question that says, drop your run plan for ultra prep. So I'll put a screenshot of what an average week looked like for me, but I did three runs a week and this consisted of one easy run, one interval or tempo run. So kind of more speed work based things and a long run. And then I also tried to fit in two workout sessions a week. And I also just tried to add mobility in when and where I could, although truth be told, I could have been better with my, my mobility, but I, I was better than my marathon. So that counts for something. Yeah, the thing that I really like about it is you can move your week around obviously we are all people with busy schedules life gets in the way it's really easy to rearrange your week so nothing is fixed and you can really be as flexible as you want with the training plan i connect it to my chorus i've got a chorus pace too it integrates really nicely if you're hit going for certain paces or certain distances it will kind of let you know when your next interval is it will give you an idea of if you're hitting your paces or not i just find it way better to have it connected to my watch than listening through my headphones because if you don't have a watch or you just prefer to have like someone in your ear telling you to go faster or you know start a new split anything like that you can have you do have that option for me personally I just like to listen to my music. I don't want anyone in my ears chatting to me because I just find it really annoying. But the option is there to do whatever you want with it. So someone has asked how many miles or kilometers a week I ran. So I would say, I'm just looking at my Strava, by the way, if you wanna follow me on Strava, I'll also link that below. I'm just looking at my Strava graphs and I would say my two biggest months, which were September and October, I ran about 50 to 55, 50 to 60 K I ran. Um, it should have been slightly higher. If you've already followed me, you'll know this, but I basically was ill for a week. 
I miss a couple of my longer runs, so it should have been longer. But yeah, about the 50 to 60K mark when I was kind of in that peak training time. So when a lot of my longest runs fell. Another question while we're talking about distances of runs was, what was your longest run? So my longest run, run was 38K. Honestly, I kind of wish I hadn't gone to that extreme. I'm being completely honest. I was more fatigued than I would have liked to have been come race day for my 50K, which is just a learning curve for me. Like, this is one of the things about running is it's so different for everybody. And I understand now the importance of listening to my gut and my body as well, because although runner is fantastic and I, honestly love it so much. Training apps, even running coaches, they don't know you like you do. So that's one big takeaway from me is listen to your body no matter what your plan is saying because ultimately you know what is best. There's a few questions around how was the time commitment compared to marathon training? Did my social life suffer as, as a result? So the first thing that I wanna make incredibly clear is I am self-employed. So I kind of do half and half with Instagram and YouTube now. And then I also am a freelance marketer and I've been doing that now for two years. So longer than I've been doing the content side of stuff. So I am very much used to now setting my own hours, working as and when I need to. I have basically ne almost unlimited flexibility on how and when I work, which I, understand is an incredible privilege to have and the majority of people are working nine to fives and so they're a lot more constricted as to when they can train which makes things a lot harder their weekends are dedicated to training usually all their mornings and evenings before and after work are and that's honestly just not something that I have had to consider. So I have to say that because I don't want you to think that I am this amazing person that is, you know, doing a nine to five under fixed hours, working for someone else, and then also just on the side, casually running a marathon because that is just not how, not how it's gone. There were times when it was harder. Uh, obviously with social life, things tend to happen more on the weekends. The weekends was usually when I did my longest run. There was a few things that came around, like my best friend got married, I was a bridesmaid, so that was one whole weekend kind of wiped out. So it's just a case of like trying to move things around. If you're using a training plan, you can kind of see ahead when your long runs fall and you can move them. So it's good to be able to see what is coming. Yeah, the time commitment is big with any any race or endurance event, it's gonna take up a lot of time. But I do think personally, like I'm not the kind of person that would be like, I'm, I'm not seeing any friends. I'm, you know, I'm, I've got my head in the game. I would much rather move things around or skip things um, in terms of the runs so I could have more of a social life because I don't think that training that seriously and that intensely for me, and I think for most people, is not a sustainable thing. And for me, this running journey is all about building sustainable and healthy habits with running and with exercise. I think just be chilled with it, you know, do what you can, put effort into it, but also don't feel bad if you wanna go on a night out with your friends and then on the Sunday you're a bit hungover, so you move your run or you skip it. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, you're gonna be thinking about all these amazing memories that you've made with your friends, not the time that you skipped a run. I feel like I waffled on a bit there, but I feel quite passionately about making running or whatever it is that you're doing sustainable and part of your ongoing lifestyle, because otherwise I feel like you just get overwhelmed and you just stop doing it completely. And quite a few questions around fueling strategies and what I ate and stuff. And I say this all the time, but I'm obviously not a nutritionist or a, di a, nutritionist, a nutritionist or a dietitian. I know nothing about food. So I can only tell you what I personally have done and what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me. So food and nutrition is incredibly, incredibly important within running, especially, well, I mean, of course, for all types of running, but in my opinion and my own experience, especially long distance running, because you need to make sure that you're really, really well fueled if you are going out for hours and hours on end. For example, I was out for seven and a half hours, basically a full day, right? And you still have to take on more nutrition than you would normally when you're just sat on your ass, obviously, because you're moving for that amount of time. First thing I will say is please go and do your own research about carbohydrates, how many carbohydrates you need to be eating during your runs, and also just look at basic things like protein and stuff. And what I find really useful was just trying a bunch of different things. Like over the last year and a half, I've tried so many different gels and chews and sweets and real food. And there's no right or wrong answer, like what might work for me may make you shit your pants. 
<laughs> to be honest. That's my biggest tip is just experiment. Experiment with gels because they are a lot more convenient than other, you know, bits of food. They're easier to store on you, like in your running vest or running belt. The gels that I have tried that I so far haven't had any issues with are the precision fuel gels. And I've had the gels and I've had the chews and I've had the electrolytes. They are expensive, but they do work for me personally. So I would highly recommend giving those a try. Um, again, they might not work for you. And then another thing is I like to have a variety of different foods when I run because sometimes it's harder to stomach things than it is other things. And on the day, your body can just be like, I don't want that, that is horrible. And I guess I'll talk about quickly like what I eat before races. So depending on the length of the run, um, for the ultra, I had two bagels, with butter and jam. Super, super high in carb. That about two and two hours before the race started. And then during the race, I have, I aim for 60 grams of carbs per hour. I had no toilet issues throughout the whole of the ultra. Didn't go to the loo once actually until I got home. But again, it's because I have practiced my nutrition on my long run. So don't get to the day of your race and try nutrition for the first time. Make sure that you're trying nutrition on every single long run that you have. So once a week, I'll do this fueling strategy. And it really works, like it really, really does. So do your own research, test lots of different things and that's it, and just make sure you're eating enough. And then afterwards, yeah, again, you've got to get the protein in to make sure that your body can repair and all the other nutrients as well. Yeah, this is one thing that I actually found quite overwhelming about running is you think it's just going out and running. <laughs> but there's so many other things involved, but I think you just kind of get used to it the more that you run, so try not to feel too overwhelmed. And now let's get on to the race itself. So someone asked, how did it feel compared to running a marathon atmosphere, ex exhaustion levels, etc.? So it's a very good question because I, as I was running, there were so many things that I noticed and that I just kind of was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> they are different to road running. So basically, all of the races I did before were predominantly road races, especially kind of the half marathons and the marathon that I did. All road running, big events. And this one was half road, half trail. And it was also a lot smaller. I think there was a few hundred runners doing it. So it was a, it was a very different event to what I was used to. So I think it's been good to split it up into the pros and the cons of trail running. So again, this is personal, feel free to disagree go off in the comments. Um, but for me personally, let's start positives. Let's start with the pros. The views were gorgeous. I love the countryside and about half of the race was in the countryside. So we were running through forests. It was my personal favorite was like the start of the race because we were just running through all these beautiful forests and it was giving twilight and I loved it. And there was some kind of fields and just a few little things that made it a lot more interesting to, to kind of look at your surroundings than a road marathon. And then another positive was that people were really lovely. I mean, it's not that everyone who does a marathon was fucking horrible, but <laughs> no one was horrible during a note like my road marathon. But this felt like a, like a, a kind of a better sense of community, I would say. People were saying hello to me and good morning as they so kindly overtook me, um, which was really nice. And you just, I never got that with the kind of half marathons and road marathons and the road marathon that I did. So that was really nice. So obviously with marathons, you have aid stations where it's normally you just kind of grab water. Some people keep running, some people stop and have a drink or whatever. Ultra, at least the one that I did, they had these aid stations that were more like checkpoints that you had to, you had to go through the checkpoint for it to register on your chip, but you didn't have to stop. But the majority of people did and they'd have kind of tables with food out. Um, usually the toilets were there as well. And they had water and like flat Coke and juice and things like that. And I think the whole atmosphere for me the whole environment was just a lot more chilled than a road marathon where I think people take it more seriously, which is fine. I just didn't feel as nervous and stressed on the morning of the ultra versus the marathon. Just because I feel like everybody was just there to have a good time. Um, obviously there's gonna be people there going for a particular, wanting to do it in a certain time, but I, I felt for the most part, everybody was just there to kind of enjoy it and spend the day out on their feet, I guess, and just challenging themselves, which I thought was really really cool the one that i did which was run to the sea bournemouth it was 
incredibly well organized. It's all signposted, which again is new to me. It's a lot easier to, fo to follow a road marathon because usually they close off the roads. It was signposted really well. My sense of direction is zero and I didn't get lost. And all of the marshals that volunteer were really incredible, really, really lovely. They spent the whole day just standing in one spot, guiding us all. And they were just like, they were great and their vibe was great. Um, and then in terms of cons, so again, this is specifically to the one that I did. There was a mixture of terrain, okay? So there was forest, field, road, sand, okay? It just means I think you need a bit more variety within your training, which can be hard if you live in a city. I live in London, so sometimes you've got to travel a bit to get to forest, field, especially sand. So um, I did train like um, I was in the countryside sometimes, like for some bits, so we were in the Cotswolds. Um, there's also a common near me. There is a lot more kind of forest vibes. So I kind of went out and did a bit of training in there as well. But um, I think it does zap your energy different terrains. So having experience on mixed terrains, I would highly, highly recommend if, you're, if your ultra is a trail ultra or a mixture of trail and road. Um, because yeah, it's just a lot more taxing, I think, than you realize. Another con, of the ultra was that with things like the Brighton Marathon, there are thousands and thousands of people like spectating. So there's always gonna be someone cheering. Um, whereas within the trail uh, ultra, there are times when I was running on my own for quite a while and there was like basically nobody around. So you have to rely a lot more on the mental battle within you and your own self-motivation to keep going because let me tell you, there is, they're not, there's not people cheering for you, okay? There's not. There'll be the odd dog walker, you know? But it's not the same as the crowds when you go to a big road event like the Brighton Marathon. So that is another thing that um, actually took me by surprise. Like I knew, obviously, that was gonna be the case, but in practice, it was a lot different. So yeah, that's another downside to it is you just gotta be more prepared and battle through really tough times like that. I mentioned over on my Instagram, I think it was, that I was my period around the time of the ultra. And they were basically asking if that, uh, do you think it was difficult because of your period? It affects me so much when I'm getting mine. And I don't know why I was about to say I don't want to make excuses because the effect that periods have on your body is significant, especially when it comes to physical exercise. So I retract the statement that I was about to make about it being an excuse because it bloody well wasn't an excuse. So basically... I was due on my period on the Sunday and my ultra was on the Saturday. So basically for me, about a week on the lead up to my period, my energy is insanely low. My fitness always feels a lot worse. And I just struggle in general with a lot of things from being like, from like productivity to physical exercise as well. So I definitely think that being on my period affected my performance just because seeing my body on, on, on top of my body already being fatigued from the training, I think it was like a double whammy, like pow, right in the face. It did really, really make me struggle. And then like clockwork, I came on my period Sunday evening. Yeah, I honestly do think that it did play a part and it made me a lot more tired. And also depending on what your symptoms are, um, when you're coming onto your period, you can just have a lot more kind of like a negative energy, negative thoughts kind of creep in a lot easier and I think that also played a part as well but I'm really proud of myself for being able to push through that whilst also about to come on my period just think that's like really cool that I was still able to do that but a few questions around injury how I avoided injury I honestly think it was because I did a mixture of strength training which I would highly recommend to avoid injury I did bits of mobility again could have been better I also didn't necessarily push myself to the point where I think I could have got a serious injury. Like I like to keep my training as chill as possible, apart from obviously the day, one day a week when I do the interval and the speed work. And I, th I also run walk a lot. So I think that kind of helps my body recover quicker and not be as fatigued. And it's probably less impact on my joints as well because I'm not constantly running. So I think that's probably why. Um, in terms of gear and equipment, what slash if would you change? And also questions about how were your feet after? Any problems, blisters, soreness? I had no blisters. I had no real soreness in my feet. Um, and in terms of gear, you know what? I think I nailed it for my first first ultra event. I obviously practice in a lot of gear that I wear beforehand. So I know on the day, like I, I'm not gonna, um, there's not gonna be any surprises. I'll list everything that I wore um, on the ultra. I also made a full video on everything that I took. For me, things that you might forget about, toilet roll, 
I mean, I didn't need it, but someone else might. Making sure that you've got enough food and water with you. Depending on what season you're running in, layer up, but make it easy to take layers off as well. One big thing is a running vest. Like, I wear my running vest for most of my distances. It's just a great place to put all of your crap in. So I think I pretty, I think I smashed it with my kit. Not gonna lie. <laughs> my camera died. So we're gonna have to just make this a little less formal and do it on my phone. I'm literally using my arm as a tripod. Why did I choose that specific race? So I did run to the Sea Bournemouth and the reason that I chose it was because some of the research that I'd done said it was like pretty beginner friendly and they, they call it flat, but I would like to make it clear that flat in the running world doesn't actually mean it is dead flat. If you said to me it's a flat course, I'm thinking, great, it's flat, it's not flat. I think the elevation was like, 300 meters which apparently is is flat but if you live somewhere like me like in London where there's not really many hills and I actually am training on flat it feels different so always look at elevation <laughs> always look at the elevation map but that's why I chose it it was supposed to be pretty beginner friendly really well organized and also semi local to me I think it was like a two hour drive something like that which is good because I don't like traveling too far for races I mean sometimes it's great but they it, traveling makes me a bit more nervous I feel like there's more of a build-up and just more to think about. So yeah, that is why I chose that. And I just kind of want to summarise everything, hopefully concisely, but it's me. I'm never really that concise. I would say overall, it was such a fantastic experience. I don't regret doing it at all. I'm so proud that I was able to complete it and to say that I am now an ultramarathoner, if that's the term. The one thing that I will say if you're thinking about doing an ultramarathon is don't neglect the mental side of it. Like yes you can train for it physically and get fitter and get stronger which is actually what my next goal is i really want to work on my fitness and my strength um but when it feels hard on a run that's actually a positive thing during training because it's going to prepare you for the day the harder it feels and every time you get through it it will just improve your mental strength and you are going to be amazed by how much mental resilience you can build just by pushing through and it seems so simple and so easy but there are times when it's going to really really test you and you're going to question why you're doing it and it's going to feel impossible or really hard in that time but you will push through it <laughs> and even if you don't you fail the run you'll come back and you'll do it again and you'll wonder why did I struggle with that so much mindset's such a big thing I think this whole ultra marathon and marathon experience for me has completely shifted my perspective on what I think I'm able to do. Like I think there's so many things now that I I maybe would try that I wouldn't have done just because I know that if I set my mind to something, yeah, it's going to be fucking hard, but you know, you're going to be able to do it. And that's one of the really cool things about endurance events for me um, is pushing through what you think is impossible and what is hard. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was me just talking to a camera sat in one spot for a long time. I do have pins and needles and my bum is numb. So I am going to stand up now. If you have any other questions, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them and have a chat with you. Let me know if you're doing an ultra marathon or a endurance event anytime soon. I'd love to know what race you're doing, how you're feeling for it. Is it your first one? Subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram. Just as a reminder, if you are looking for a training plan, I've left my runner link below. And I will see you in the next video.